Greetings, this is Jerry Rivera with the Avaya Technology Strategy and Development Team, TSND. This video describes the use of ADS 2.0 network monitoring. It will show the settings of parameters that SLA Mon Server will use to evaluate and provide alarms and alerts for to assist in network troubleshooting. This video will look at the SLA Mon network monitoring functions. What is being shown here builds upon several other Avaya Mentor videos on the Avaya Diagnostic Server 2.0 release. We will look at how to set the monitoring thresholds for various alarm values for round trip delay, jitter, packet loss, and EMOS, which is estimated mean opinion scores for the various monitored services. We will see how to define the differentiated services code point value or DSCP for the same services based on your network needs. We will take a look at the network monitoring tab options and look at how the various errors and outages are displayed between subnets and zones. This slide shows a view of the network summary grid and what the colors indicate in the associated tables and their definitions. I have now brought up the SLA Mon main screen. Briefly, this screen is the interface used to set up the agent discovery process. The next tab to the right displays the discovered agents that will be used for the testing. Going to the Admin tab and selecting the Properties choice will allow us to utilize the four tabs to set up the various property options. The first tab is for sending SNMP traps when a monitor threshold is exceeded. Next, we will see where to set the various thresholds that are in the Alarm Threshold tab. Round Trip Delay, Jitter, Packet Loss, and EMOS estimated mean opinion score values are set in this dialog. Generally, 180 milliseconds is considered a standard one-way delay for voice. The Round Trip Delay value shown as the default should be doubled to 360 milliseconds. The default packet loss and jitter values are considered commonly accepted values. However, they may be a little low in general cases. Adjust to what you are comfortable with based upon your own situation. The EMOS scores are based upon the ITUT G.107 recommendation. 4.0 to 4.5 is considered PSTN toll quality. 3.6 is considered business quality. For data, set these values based on the network values within your enterprise or your tolerance levels. The last column, called Strike, defines when an alarm is generated when the value entered is exceeded in a given hour's time. Adjust the values as needed and press the Save Changes button to store the applied changes. Moving over to the Test Setup tab, this is where the Differentiated Services Code Point, or DSCP, values are set up. The values shown here are generally accepted DSCP values. Adjust as appropriate based upon values needed in your enterprise. The lower checkbox can be unchecked if video is not being used in the network. The last tab is where the default country is set. This is set here and seen in the Agent Discovery tab as the starting country. The country can be changed in that tab as needed for the multi-location or multinational business. Moving over to the Test Administration tab and Test Execution, we can see the default test pattern is selected and running in this example. You can see the lower portion of the screen, the number of tests being ran, and the number of test failures. Failures could occur due to a number of reasons, such as lack of agents in a subnet or network problems. They are quantified here. In the upper area of the screen, you'll see that the start and stop buttons for running the test pattern is selected. There is also a refresh button to update the data displayed on the screen. Finally, there is a button to display the test being run. Selecting the button, you'll get a display as shown here. The display defines both subnets and cities the tests are occurring between, the codex under test, and the DSCP values being tested with. Moving over to the Network Monitoring tab, we see a 6x6 six six matrix formed by the three zones and three subnets configured in this implementation. The slide I showed at the beginning describes the different colored squares shown. There is also a legend shown for reference in the title area of the display. 
The three colors shown in this view indicates zones in blue, green indicating the intersection of two network areas are within the thresholds set, and black showing no data being reported in several of the intersecting areas. This particular setup has been designed to have impairments to provide some of that output. Now let's take a moment to define what the vertical and horizontal labels are indicating. Down the left side of the matrix shows the name of a zone or the city subnet where it's configured. The title is followed by a number in that row label. The number 01 through 06 corresponds to the number shown at the top of each of the columns. An example to illustrate how this works, if you would be interested in the monitor traffic between the U.S. Zone, Row 1, and the Singapore subnet, you would identify the number of the Singapore subnet by finding its name in the left-hand column in the margin and seeing that it is 05. You would then select the green square in the America Zone row and the second square from the left for column 5. On the left of the chart is a configuration of the matrix being shown. If you would uncheck some of the checkboxes and press the green arrowed refresh button, you would downscale the chart to limit the number of areas shown and may be of interest to you. The last area to note is immediately above the chart. There is a traffic area and a parameter area. Selecting the audio, video, or data traffic and the parameter of interest, you can see the macro view of what is occurring by the cell colors changing as you select each of the different parameters. Selecting data traffic and moving across the parameter choices coming to the remarking, you can see a dramatic change in color. So selecting the intersection of the Americas and Europe zone, we can drill down to look at the specifics. You can see in the summary table that the red indicator is pointing out the remarking error in the sixth row. The remarking area is occurring in both directions. The upper table shows the Americas to Europe and the lower reports the opposite direction. Moving down to the DSCP details, you can see the routing is severely impaired. The direction of the America zone to the Europe zone is going through 19 hops, and the return direction has only 10. You can see the audio disk serve marking values has changed from a 46 to 0, and the video has had similar occurrences of marking changes. Going into the matrix at the Bangalore to Singapore intersection, you can see that some delay and some other errors are being shown. I have changed to a later date range to show this functionality. At the top of the QoS area, you have a start and stop button. Clicking on the start date, you can see it open a dialog where I'm adjusting the time back about two hours and pressing the update button. Time window now that is displayed is roughly about three hours. Using these two buttons, you can adjust the time window from the current time to the earliest point in the time that there is data being stored. Slowly sliding across the timeline, you can see the specific delay values at the reference point in time on the status line under the chart. The last thing I want to point out is as you hover from one parameter to another, a pop-up is provided to provide an intuitive one to two lines of help to identify the parameter function. There's a lot more to this interface than what I can show you in this video. My best suggestion is for you to experiment with the tool in your own network. Using your own network map, the tool will provide the granular details to baseline and troubleshoot your enterprise as needed. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.